Okay, uh, in the last video, we were trying to solve this integral right here, and we made this substitution in the hopes that when we did that, it would transform this integral into a gamma function integral. And we had worked it down so far into this form here, and now you want to continue working with it. Um, notice here we have the constant a in the denominator. Here we have the constant a in the denominator. Let's take these constants to the outside of the integral. So this will equal 1 over n times a. And if I took this a upstairs, I could write this as y a to the minus 1 raised to this power here, so this would be a to the minus m over n. And for this one, this would be a to the minus this power, or that would be n minus 1 over n. And then we have this integral here. And inside we now have y, the m over n, times y to the 1 minus n over n, times e to the minus y dy. And we still have an a down here, so let's rewrite this part. 1 over n. This would be times a to the minus 1. Let's deal with this one first. Here we have a to the minus m over n times a to the minus 1. That would be minus n over n. That's a to the minus 1 times a to the n minus 1 over n. And then we have this integral here. Uh, these over the same denominator. So we have y to the m plus 1 minus n divided by n times e to the minus y dy. We'll come back and think about this in a minute. Let's clear this up here. Uh, let's see. This will equal 1 over n. Here we have a constant n in the denominator. So this would be a to the n minus 1 minus n minus m. divided by n. And what about this integral here? Um, we're thinking obviously in terms of gamma function type integrals. And remember how this works out. Well first let's take a look at this. Here we have the variable y raised to some power. Then we have e to the minus that variable dy. Okay, if we look at a gamma function, here we have this variable x, e is raised to the minus that variable dx, but this x is to the a variable minus 1. So if we had this as y to some variable minus 1, we already have e to the minus y dy, that should transform then into a gamma type integral. So let's see here. If I divide e by n, I would have y to the m plus 1 divided by n minus 1. We just divided by n here. Times e to the minus y dy. So this 
should be a gamma type function now. So I have the variable y, so I have e to the minus that variable dy, that fits the pattern, and y is raised to the power of some variable minus 1. And in fact, this right here then would be the gamma function of m plus 1 over m. If we said, all right, here's the gamma function of m plus 1 over n, how would you write it as the integral? And you say, well, that would be the integral of a variable, we'll call it y, raised to this power of minus 1 times e to the minus that variable dy. Now let's look at this side here. Um, here we have 1 over n and let's see here we have n minus 1 minus n minus m. These will cancel. So I have in the numerator minus 1 minus m. Let's write this as a over n. Let's write this a little bit more neatly here. And this will be minus 1 plus m. So finally then, this times this integral is this times the gamma function of m plus 1 over n. And where did this come from? We look backwards here. That came from mainly just doing algebraic manipulations with this integral, which in turn came from this integral when we made the substitution here. So finally then we can say that the integral that we began with, 0 to infinity, x to the m times e to the minus a times x to the n dx equals this. Here we have a minus over here, so we can write this as 1 over n times a to the m plus 1 divided by n. Oops. This is a to the minus this power, so we can bring this downstairs here then. And we have this part here. The gamma function of m plus 1 divided by n. And there it is. That was a little bit more complicated than our previous examples, but mainly it was just doing a lot of algebraic manipulations. And if we had now specific numbers for m and n, we could put them into here, and then using our basic properties of uh, gamma functions, we could get an actual numerical solution. Uh, so this is a little bit longer than our previous examples, but we want to try to work our way through a little bit more of a more complicated problem. Uh, come back, join us for another video, and we'll try and tackle one more gamma function type in